guys, it's Pilot Bambi and welcome back to another vlog. We're currently at the entrance of the Sling Aircraft Company here in South Africa. It's close to Joburg. This airport's called Tetherfield and I think we're gonna see some really cool planes being built here. Sling Aircraft, formerly known as the Airplane Factory, has seen a fascinating development throughout the last 13 years. Together, James Pittman and Mike Blythe two aviation enthusiasts and adventurers at heart, set out on a mission to build the finest, most loved and reliable aircraft in the world. They proved their initial success with the Sling 2, flying their first ever prototype around the world in 40 days, triumphantly winning the hearts of aircraft lovers across the globe. They have now designed and built five different models, demonstrating the company's ability to innovate and listen to the needs of their clients. With a sharp eye for design, safety, and functionality, the company truly is a pioneer in the development of modern aircraft. Designed by pilots, for pilots. And today, we get to have a look at how these incredible airplanes are built. Well, we just had our coffee and rest, and now it's time to start our tour. So, the whole, this end of the runway is the factory. There's a couple of kind of odd end hangers all over the show that's not ours uh, or not us but this side is essentially us that side obviously as you guys you, you guys have seen that's all privately owned um, residents essentially with their own kind of hangers and planes um, so we're gonna go through all the kind of hangers that's where we end that side of the airfield or the uh, hangers we end that side this is electrics and a couple other things but when you walk in here to the left you'll see the highway You've seen it now at the Asia, but it's kind of cool here um, at the factory. You can take photos, go crazy, don't worry about not taking photos. So yeah, let's go. Cool. So can you tell us a bit about this prototype high wing yeah. sling, the first one? Yes, yeah. So um, the first one, tricycle gear, as you can see. Um, this is the kind of very first production model we kind of built ourselves to do all the testing. There's the first one that came through that was like a static test unit. Um, this is the first flying one, first flight 18th of December last year. She flies! Yeah! Um, so quite a while back now. Um, we're starting another round of test flying now on it to make sure that we kind of happy with the performance, getting the speeds in the stalls and so on. Um, making sure it kind of complies to the standards. Um, so yeah, interior is not completely what we want it to be, um, but there is something in. And then our next prototype will be the same setup but tail dragger. Um, so that's quite cool. Um, should fly into May. Um, that's the one that will fly to Oshkosh. So we've taken 40 odd deposits, 41 deposits on it. We hope to kind of wind production up for it. So what's going on behind here? That's all part of our so Yes. Said, right? So um, this hangar is essentially so at the top there. There's the electric stores. Then that's the kind of installation bay for electrics. So avionics wiring harness and so on. This side is a bit of a developmental side. Then this is the main kind of electric side. So they do the actual laying up of the, uh, the harness. So it's all raw material. We don't get someone outsourced to do it for us. We do it ourselves. Um, so they lay up the harness. They wire the actual panel, the rack where all the kind of back end stuff goes on, your transponder, yeah. audio panel and so on. Um, and then they finish it there. And from there it moves to that actual plane that will be obviously coming next in line. Um, behind there is a machine shop, so just more specialized tools doing machine work um, and then a uh, fire stall on the side with yeah. highly flammable stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you want to kind of walk past yeah. it. <coughs> You've seen it at the show. I mean, the space you have, this is crazy. Can I just move it forward? Yes, you're welcome to. So our flat actuator is electric motor. Yeah. So we installed one under each uh, seat individually. Um, so you can actually, like a, in a Merc or a car, just push the button and the seat will lift itself electrically. Uh, so that's quite nice. So for short people, you will be able to go higher. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a four-seater, right? Full four-seater, yes. A real four-seater, not a two plus two, an yeah. actual four-seater, yeah. I think that can actually carry four people. That's it. <laughs> With full fuel and so on and so on. Yeah, and how was the, has the performance been so far? So it's been quite well, uh, quite good. Um, we expected it to be on the low end compared to the TSI. So the TSI does like a 148 knots, true air speed, uh, burning 20, 28 liters of MoGas, so car fuel, an hour. 
Um, we expected this one to be about two to three knots slower and it ended up being almost exactly the same. So what's going on here? So we are moving into the second phase of test flying and what I'm doing is fitting these tassels on the side and empennage fairing on the plane and we're going to set up cameras and we're going to go test flying and we're going to do spins and banks and turns and things to see what's the air doing across the fuselage. So if the air is good and we've got good airflow, the tassels will stay straight. If the airflow is not good, then it'll drop. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm setting up these tassels in specific spots. Okay, R&D, research and development, let's go. That's where the secrets are. Where did you see this? That's classified. But before we get to R&D, this is our quality control or QC department. Um, so two departments that you won't see on the airfield by us anymore, that is um, composites. So all the canopies and cowlings, any composite um, part that we manufacture, we do that ourselves. Not here anymore because we don't have space. And then the biggest one is all these aluminium parts you'll see. That's our primary parts manufacturing. So the guys are the CNC punchers, routers and all that. Um, we do it ourselves, it's not contracted out by a different company, we do it ourselves. Um, also just off somewhere else um, in Joburg, um, same place actually where composites are. Just purely we moved it because space was an issue and the electricity grid couldn't handle it yet. <laughs> we do all of it ourselves, we've got the benders, the hydroformers and all those things. Yeah. Ignore yeah. this part. <laughs> this is all testing, so yeah. it's actually supposed to look like that. Exactly. It's them trying to look like they are busy. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got 3D printers for a bit of like developmental work. Just kind of testing a few things how it works and gets together. Yeah. Um, not a big part of it, but nonetheless. Um, so all the draftsmen, engineers, aeronautical engineers, um, all the guys work on Solid Works as our main program. And who um, is this? This is Vernon. Vernon. Do you want to tell us a bit about what you're doing? Um, basically, we're doing construction manuals at the moment, uh, the TSI construction manual, um, basically for the customers, and we are also improving parts, making new revisions of the parts, updating the construction manual about that. So yeah, that's basically what I'm doing at the moment. Super cool. So TSI construction manual, finishing kit, I'm assuming. Yes. Fantastic. The builders will be very happy to hear yeah. that. So that paint scheme was just a paint scheme done. It wasn't something special about it. And then that photo came out and that paint scheme on the aircraft became known as the Hollywood design. Oh really? Um, so if anyone wants to buy a plane and they want that design, they'll come to us and say, I want that Hollywood design. This is a canopy for a swing TSI. I don't know why it's here. Just to look good. And now this here I see a lot of things going on with the yeah, children, which we are super interested it in. Yes. <laughs> so um, I know over here, so Jared and I know was at Middleburg Air Week. So I know essentially is the guy drawing everything, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, on the high wing? Yeah, he's yeah. the wing. Yeah, he's the, he's the guy that sits with the pen and coke and draws all the lines. How does the design team kind of envision what the visionaries want? Yes. Is there a group of, of people that sit at the drawing table and design it? Is that what you guys did here? Um, essentially, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Mark had the idea and he knew kind of how he wanted it to look. So, and then he will sit with the draftsman and say, okay, uh, so the draftsman will do a basic design first, and then he'll come and sit with the draftsman and be like, okay, I uh, know that, so I don't like how that looks, make it more round, uh, yeah. make that corner sharp or what have you. And then the draftsman will go and fix all of that up, and then eventually, we also have to make sure it actually works, so practically we have to think about that. And so if it looks nice but doesn't work, we have to change it yeah. to make it work. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of processes involved in that so until you get to the actual final stage. Yeah. yeah, so I know it was just basically working on this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it wasn't, you, this is your main focus for the last, call it three years. Two years. Two and a half years. Yeah, <laughs> so this is like proper high wing developmental um, work going on in here. Um, it's also our kind of maintenance area, so the guys making the boxes for special orders with kits, so they build the actual boxes. And then the coolest, for me, one of the coolest sections in here is making of the actual windscreen. Yeah. So the Perspex glass. We do that ourselves. Um, we don't pay someone, a different company in Europe to do it for us and then we import it. We make it ourselves. Um, so let's go in and I'll tell you more about it in detail. Just mind your head and your step. This is... 
Enoch, how long have you been working here? More than 10 years. So Enoch is one of the originals. Um, <laughs> been here for about more than 10 years working on... He's the guy that basically just welds your engine frames for a sling. A lot of welding going on here and he's the best person for this job. Very talented welder. So canopies are made in here. Um, or the canopy glass. For sling 2 that's a whole canopy because the top section is just glass. But yeah, let's walk in and have a look. Morning! The cameras are here to film you guys. <laughs> so we make the glass ourselves. Um, obviously it comes in a big perspex sheet like that. It comes like that. They then... There's a lot of processes obviously involved in it. I don't know everything exactly off by heart. Um, what it comes down to is it goes into the oven on your right hand side. They heat it up and it starts obviously melting and becomes soft um, with a mold over it. This is one of the molds. This is for a sling. Which which can I, which TSI windscreen. TSI windscreen. Cool. So TSI windscreen. Um, it's got a like a felt type of material. Um, they put resin and silicone silicone on there. Yeah, silicone over it and then put the actual perspex sheet in it. It goes into the oven, heats up, it's clamped on either side of it. Um, clamped to this metal piece here on either side. Um, and then, correct me if I'm wrong, as you heat it up, they fasten it and wind it up so that it pulls more over the, sh the, the mold. Once it's up to temperature and they are happy with it, the temperature gets turned off or drops slowly, very slowly. And then you loosen it again. No, I don't know what we were doing before. Yeah? Before, yeah, we're listening. But now we just leave it like that. Okay, so they just leave it like that. And then it basically just sets over it. They get, they pull, the, pull it out and then let it obviously just cool down completely to um, room temperature. Cut it out and then you sit with the end product like that. So to put it in perspective, a lot of aviation companies, um, experimental guys in Europe, um, racing guys, so the racing teams for LMP1 and Lamar and so on. Those guys, all uh, not really those kind of high-end guys, but a lot of the smaller companies always contacted us to help them with their windscreen. We've got a, a company in South Africa busy with their own design for um, a Lamar competing car, and the guy tried to get us to help, and we are sort of going to help him out, but not as much as we'd like to because we need you guys to focus. Are so busy. Yeah, we need to focus on what we do. Yeah. Um, but it's a difficult thing to get right these windscreens. So we used to get like a heat ratio of four in ten. So for every ten we make, we throw away six because it's got blemishes or something. It's not perfect. Uh, it's got those waves, so you can't use that. Um, now we are at a stage where we get ninety-eight percent correct. What? So the heat ratio is just uh, they don't come out wrong. If they come out wrong, there's something big that's wrong. Yeah. Um, so quite cool. I'm quite proud of that. This is really one of my favorite. Well, just like it's a golden nugget in uh, hidden at the mm -hmm. back. No one sees it. No one knows it. <laughs> so glad I could show you. So this is this is just part of the mold of the high wing. Um, so they they come in basically like three sections. So two halves and the top. like a Netherlands. <laughs> How are you going guys? Are you good? Hi. I'm James. Rosita. Rosita, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you Thanks. too. Thanks. So this flight we're about to do here is what I consider, you know, what we in South Africa refer to as like the cockiest flight <laughs> that there is because the, um, I prefer to fly airplanes with quite a rear CG because it's because they're more responsive, you yeah. know. But this, where Jonathan's loaded this airplane now with weights like in front of the rudder pedals so that with the two of us and like full fuel, the fuel tends to pull the CG forward. It's at like the absolute full forward CG that you'll ever fly at. Yeah. So the thing is as heavy and unresponsive as it'll ever be. Are you looking forward to the tailwheel version more? Yes, that's so I am looking forward. I, I love to fly. I mean, I do like to fly tail draggers and it is a real thing. You can land on a, a rougher surface with bigger holes and bigger rocks. So I'm getting into the low wing and flying with Sean and we'll be doing some formation flying with the prototype high wing which is going to be super cool. <laughs> We had a 
had a quick break, had some coffee, and now we're going to upholstery. Uh, I'm just, um, this is Lichle. This is Rosita. Rosita. Nice. Rosita. 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 You're gonna come into my messy workshop. That's it. Yeah. We're gonna show people how messy it looks in here. We make everything regarding upholstery. So from the carpets to canopy covers, pillow tube covers, um, intake plugs, um, anything. We do it all ourselves. Imported leather, local leather, whatever. Um, Lichle on my left, she's the manager of the upholstery department. Um, so yeah, Lichle. Yeah, so basically this is upholstery, anything that has to do with upholstery, um, from raw materials, so nothing is machine programmed or anything. We've actually literally got staff sitting and stitching everything from wow. scratch. Um, obviously a lot of the designs are custom made, so Bertus is the one that goes out, gets the customers, tells them that we can do magic, and I <laughs> scream at him and we do magic. Okay. <laughs> so at the end of the day we do what the customer requires, um, and the bottom line is we want to make all our customers happy. So this is where, this is one of our messy workshops and I think it's one of the messiest workshops. Oh, yes, because we cut and we cut and we cut and we cut and well, we've got everything everywhere. But what comes out of here is magic. And it's probably where the hardest work is done as well. I tell Day them all the time. <laughs> this is where we make things pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's have a look. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Our foam, the chairs, this is where we cut it from scratch. So we can sheet a foam and we cut it from scratch. And we hand stitch everything. The leather is cut from raw material. The old lady up there makes those big canopy covers that cover the aircraft. She's our expert. So they hand stitch everything here. So from what she's cutting to the actual seat that is stitched, hand stitched. So this is the back seat. This is all hand stitched. This is all hand stitched from scratch. Everything. Everything. We see with a lot of other companies, they import a lot of things from different places and they, they just they buy the seats somewhere else. They buy the, the canopy somewhere else. Yeah. And here everything's done in-house. In-house. Tetherfield. Everything. <laughs> so Everything. cool. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is our kit packing department um, obviously because we are an experimental aircraft company um, kit builders is a massive thing for us um, the most like the biggest portion of our business is guys that want to build themselves and um, this is where the magic happens so let's go in and have a look pick one out for ourselves <laughs> hello everyone hello. Hi. 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 Hello. So fast. Nice. Hello. 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 This is a wing kit. Um, basically, just shows you, give you, gives you an idea of how everything is packed. Kind of level of detail that goes into every single thing. So individually labeled parts, everything kind of packed as you would need it. Um, these guys work very hard to kind of get these things right. And yes, we all are human, so it's not perfect always. Um, but that's part of it. Makes the journey nice. And um, how many of these boxes is the full kit? So a full a full aircraft is about seven boxes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so it, it ranges. There's a few small ones, so not massive, but the main portions is only five. Um, so five big pieces, and then the rest is the I would ones. just be if my, the boxes came in, I'd be first of all very excited, yeah. and then I'd be very overwhelmed and yeah, scared. Scared. <laughs> Because it's a massive logo, you see. Okay, logo, Lego. Yeah. <laughs> so over here we've got canopies and all the other parts and six, seven boxes. That's incredible. So this is our sub assembly hangar. Um, this is where the actual building happens of the planes. Um, so the parts move in here as uh, essentially just loose parts in a box and they then assemble it and turn it into the wing, fuselage, empennage, and so on and so on. So cool, let's go have a look. So to show you, give you an idea of where everything is. So this section is wings um, and flaps and ailerons. Then right corner at the back is the main spar, your wing spar. Then fuel tanks, your tail, your empennage, and then the fuselage. On the left in this barricaded area, that's where we do aladining. So it's essentially just dipping of all the parts into a solution, a chemical. And that makes the parts have this gold finish to it, or brownish finish. And that helps with corrosion protection. 
Um, so it's quite a cool sort of add-on to it. But yeah, we can walk through it and I'll show you around. Cool, so you can get an idea of the wings. So this is just the Clicos we put in place to hold it. And then they'll come now and rivet all the holes, the two holes in between. Remove the Clicos and rivet the rest. Super cool. Um, so this is the bottom side. So there you can see what I said about the dimpling, the holes being dimpled. And then they get a counter sun. So you can put them next to each other. Yeah, so you can have a look. So this one is kind of rounded at the top. That's the flush finish. Yeah. So like flat. And that's so when... dome, counter sun. And that's the one you guys are using. That's it. The wing spar. So it's not the conventional solid piece of um, metal. It's all in different kind of sections put together to become a wing spar. So kind of nice for stress as well. If there's any stress fractures, you just replace one of the caps. So those are essentially all the loose parts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we do all of that ourselves. That's the one section we don't allow anyone else to build as well. Just to kind of help with safety and so on. Like the fuel tank is on the leading edge of the aircraft, so the front side. <laughs> that standard configuration, if you've got long range tanks, then that's also awesome. Just be careful, it's quite heavy. It's quite a heavy piece of aluminium. So just <laughs> Ooh, let's go. <laughs> I'm so ready, but this is so cool. Yeah, it weighs nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maritz, do you want to feel? <laughs> wow, it's incredible. Just be careful, it's quite heavy. <laughs> cool, so that's the ribs. This is, a, this is the wing tip. So nicely with the winglet. Can I feel it? How yeah, you can feel. It's also quite light. So this is the long range fuel tank that I just mentioned. So you can actually see, so this one, the whole thing is the fuel tank, yeah. um, but it's a lot smaller. So this is about a 25 liter per wing. And um, what is this tank. over here? Is that a, that's just the filter? That's, yeah, that's your pickup with the yeah. filter. The main tank, but this is now completely done. So they've assembled it completely. So you can kind of see how they seal it off and how the flow goes, but that is, uh, Tank. They are busy with it now. So essentially, it's rinsing off um, the parts. Then it goes into like a, a Nova Clean cleaning agent. From the Nova Clean, the cleaning agent directly into the bath of aladdin chemical, and then gets rinsed, and then it's done. Then it just hang, gets hanged to dry. Yeah. So a TSI Sling Two, TSI Sling Two. Um, so the guys here just assemble the actual TSI fuselage. Um, we can kind of walk through it and you can kind of just get a good idea of the detail. This is a non-parachute fuselage, so it doesn't have a parachute box in. So you can see it's got a lot more luggage space. Hmm. Um, compared to that one, we'll, we'll go there now. Um, but you'll see there's a luggage, kind of the luggage compartment with a massive box in. That is where your parachute gets installed. Um, and this one doesn't have the cables, so I'll show you on that one as well. So that is the parachute box. Okay. Where yeah. the parachute goes in. Cables are also, they are um, basically built into the canopy itself with the composite section. Um, it's got two layers with the cables in between the two layers. And then they go through the side all the way to the front and gets mounted where the engine mounts are. Uh, we're going to go into spray shop. It's a spray shop. You've seen one in the world, you've seen all of them. <laughs> so, we do kind of any custom paint job that you guys could want ever. Um, it's mostly only on production built planes. Obviously a kit builder doesn't build here by us. They build in the States or wherever, so we don't do those guys' paint jobs. But if we build the plane, we can do it here. Uh, so you give us a photo and we'll do it. We can train here. So this is the high wing tail dragger. The first prototype tail dragger. Hello. Hello! And in our new spray booth, which is quite cool. This always reminds me of Pim My Rai. <laughs> this is massive plane, actually. It doesn't look so big when you stand next to the other one, with the tricycle gear. But next to this one, it's quite a massive plane. This is essentially the final assembly. Um, so after spray shop, the plane will come here. So it gets wheeled in, then it's just kind of the engine gets mounted first. Um, from engine mounting it will go start with a bit of the doors go on, a bit of the glass go in, um, the harness and fuel system and so on. And then the tail go on, the empennage, move to the our left there, right? The wings go on, further work on the engine, the propeller, 
um, the wheel fairings or wheel pants in America, they call it wheel pants, I think, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and then essentially, this is almost done. Uh, this is a local customer's TSI, um, quite a beautiful looking TSI. Oh, it's stunning um, livery as well. Yeah, quite nice. Um, so this has been ground run, uh, so from ground run it will essentially go for test flight, initial test flight, probably Monday or so. And now the big question is that a lot of people will probably be wondering, how many do you finalize per year? So we build about the kind of goal is to get to four production build planes a month, so 48 a year. Um, at the moment we're doing about three a month, and so just short of that. Um, but we are ramping up production to get to four a month. But wow, <coughs> four a month, that's one, one every week. Yeah, essentially, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, one a week. Um, I don't have a white one here. So the white one you saw that side, Zutex, um, that's kind of a special sling two for us. That's a deal we've got with our American distributors. <coughs> Excuse me, so they call it a max sling or the sling NGT. So they have a standing order of two max or sling NGTs a month for the foreseeable future. So of the four we make, two of those and those go just to the states for flying schools so, um, cool. so quite cool kind of the just <laughs> if you think of it the amount of slings that's going into the states mm -hmm. and globally so that's cool Fantastic. awesome so i don't think there's much to talk about with the specs we all know the specs we've yeah. spoken about it today and um, just to recap rotax 915 is um turbocharged fuel injector engine with 141 horsepower um, Air Master constant speed prop, amazing props these. Um, it's kind of the only thing we recommend on a, on a, on a sling, um, the only thing on a TSI really. Uh, the combination is just amazing. Um, yeah. So that's it. This is basically the end of the tour. So the end product, the TSI as we kind of know it now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and that it was kind of like, let's show you something new about South Africa. This um, was... Yeah. Absolutely incredible being able to see what you guys produce here at this wonderful tiny little airfield and to see how passionate you are about it, how passionate everyone here is about these planes and uh, I'm really looking forward to see the development in the future. Awesome. So thank you so much for everything. It's only a pleasure. And we're really lucky. We're getting a quick lift to our plane in Lanseria by plane and then our adventures continue. Awesome. Yes. Enjoy it. Have a <laughs> safe you. flight. <laughs>